So, having narrowly avoided the homicidal clutches of William Rockwell, we now are one step closer to opening that door and gaining an audience with him on the Orpheus, but even more than that, we did manage to find a very curious pendant next to a dead body down in the catacombs. And as you can probably imagine, yeah, the owner of this pendant might just happen to be that female ghost that's been harassing us and trying to attack us throughout this portion of the ship. Maybe, just maybe, by returning this lover's memento, we might be able to quell her tormented spirit. My pendant. Our lost memories. And much like the little girl ghost, she leaves without much fanfare or leaving behind any type of an astral piece, but I start to feel now that that's because both this woman and that young girl are more likely just tools being used by William Rockwell, and that their souls are long gone. But we can't ponder on that for too long because we do have a pool to drain. And there's a very large mechanism here that has a few complications that are only made even more complicated by the fact the instructions are, well, pretty much illegible. Now we can make out a few of them here and there. You can see maybe turn small valve and turn large valve, but really can't make out what the third and fourth step are, but, well, I think we can figure it out. It shouldn't be too complicated. So first off, we'll turn the small valve. And then we'll go ahead and turn this large valve here in the center. And finally, that leaves us with, well, it looks like a lever and a button. Now, it doesn't look like we can uh, initially mess with the lever, so just go with the button. And then we'll pull the lever for the final step. And I can only assume from the cacophonous noise that the uh, this machine is giving off that we must be successful, but... Well, there's only one surefire way to find out, and that's to go ahead and go back up to the pool and see if we haven't been successful in draining it. Yeah, nothing too new on the deck. But indeed, it does look like we have become successful in draining the pool. And not only that, a crimson hue has covered the entire pool. And, well, if you recall what that young boy mentioned about the night he was murdered, this is pretty much exactly the scene that was set up when he died. But it's a necessary stage for us. It's the only way that we're going to be able to get the secret that this eye holds. I'll tell you about the red stone. I know everything. It was written in that book. Book.
And where else would you go to find a book? Well, obviously it would be your local library. Yeah, we are only two years back from where we initially left. But this might not have been the best time to come here because it seems that, uh, yeah, the library is currently closed. Hmm. Well, that is a slight hurdle, but maybe if we present our case to the librarian here, she'll understand. Though, yeah, it doesn't seem that that's going to be the case. And while I would be more than willing to come back uh, another day, I just really don't have that type of control over time and space, so we're going to have to figure out some other cunning means to get by her, and... Well, it's not really that cunning. Yeah, the solution to this complex puzzle is merely to just crouch by her. I guess she is maybe a little bit a uh, little bit hard of uh, seeing. Or maybe maybe good old uh, Richard here is just a master of stealth. But it does indeed appear that the library is full-blown into its cleaning mode. Guess they are making sure to clear off all the dust and rearrange the books, according to the Dewey Decimal System. But as you can imagine, much like the librarian, the employees aren't really too keen on us being here, though. They assume that since we managed to make it past reception, well, Maybe we're supposed to be here. And indeed we are, because... Yeah, this... This unlabeled book down here does seem very curious. Especially since it's incredibly old. But trying to pick it up... Leads to some issues. Yeah, I guess even touching the books will get in the way of their cleaning up. And this younger employee here is very, very adamant about having us not even interact with the books at all. And there are, there are quite a few books in some of these carts here. Maybe this older gentleman would be more understanding, though... Yeah, he has a, a, a very similar idea of work in, in comparison to the other employees. He's, uh, he's willing to let us stay back here because we've gotten past reception, but he would really, really rather we not uh, disturb his work. Yeah, even though he does not seem very attentive... will pretty much instantly notice us trying to mess with any of these stacks of books here. But, really, we're not interested in any of these little pieces of literature littering the, uh, the carts here. Instead, we really need to find some way to get that employee away from that book. Now, there isn't, uh, there really isn't anything else to this area of the library here. Definitely no hints on the bulletin board. And there's nothing behind the counter there. Instead, we need to be a little bit rude. Because we find that if we happen to get the young man, the younger employee's attention by interacting with some of the books, he will forcibly make his way over to where we are. And you might notice that there is this stack of books all the way in this far corner here. And he just happens to have a psychic feeling that we are disturbing his work, but it does manage to put him in a prime spot for us to not notice whenever we happen to go and pick up the book that we are looking for. It's 
So let's go ahead and take our bounty. Now that young boy made it seem like all the answers we were looking for were indeed going to be inside that book, so even though he didn't stick around for us, well, we might as well go ahead and see just what we can learn from that book. And indeed, this old book does hold quite a bit of useful backstory pretty much explains to us that the mysterious red stone that uh, the Rockwells have coveted so much over the years has a very, very strong power. The power to make men kings, to give them wealth beyond all imagination, but it requires the holder of the stone to do human sacrifices. And the blue stone that we have been in ownership of, and our father was in ownership of, is apparently the only way to really counterbalance the sheer immense magnitude of power that the redstone has. He does mention, though, that there are a few rules, specifically that the redstone can't have too many human sacrifices, and that the blue stone and the redstone should never be combined. The problem is, it's a little bit foggy as to just what might happen if those two stones are combined. And what makes that even more curious is that if we look at that pendant that we were given by the mysterious medium, it doesn't appear uh, to be the blue stone, but it seems to only be half of it. Could it be that that other half is where the red stone should be? Or, indeed, are we only in possession of half of the blue stone? Sure, that is something we will find out soon enough, but well, as of right now, we've kind of run into a dead end in regards to leads. I mean, we still have to find two more plates, but yeah, that young boy that was reading out here on the deck has just up and vanished. All that we're really left with is the quiet, peaceful sea air and an eternal night. doesn't seem to be anywhere nearby. I don't think he's in the lower deck anymore. Don't feel, though, that that will be the last time that we'll see him, but... Well, maybe Arthur and Hilda Rockwell will maybe be able to shed some light on where we can head next. And also, I'm going to take a slight detour into the other changing room. Because, as you can imagine, it does hold another item for us, though it's definitely not as impressive as the one that was in the female changing room. Yeah, it is just another claim ticket, which would put you at about a hundred chips at this point, which would be pretty helpful, but we've already done all that gambling. So, let's go ahead and head back to Arthur Rockwell. There are only two more left. Here, use this key. Please, find it quickly. Well, before we go check out the kitchen, I did want to go ahead and take a quick look at this other painting here in the dining hall, though, much like the merman, the mermaid here just seems a bit out of place. Yet again, it might just be a reference to another From Software game, but at this point there really weren't that many, and... At most, I think it might be a Kingsfield reference. It's not entirely clear, but 
Yeah, let's go ahead and see just why the kitchen area was locked. And on initial glance, nothing seems too, too dangerous in here. In fact, it looks like there is a spirit in need, which means that, well, we shouldn't be attacked in here. Let's see what he might need. My crew is down there. They haven't even realized that they've already died. I can't leave them behind. You can use that elevator to go down there. Please, save them. So another fairly dire task to save a whole cadre of seamen that are trapped in an eternal torment, but you might be wondering just where that elevator was he was talking about. And indeed, it's not immediately evident. Definitely nothing in here that screams out elevator, especially considering that just trying to walk past him is blocked. But yeah, where you want to go is exactly where he's looking. Yeah, believe it or not, this this is an elevator. Which leads us into a lower level galley area, but Still really makes you wonder just why they had this area locked off. Though that wonderment is quickly answered. Yeah, the ghostly king that was murdered by the Rockwell so very long ago is yet another one of their deadly pawns to use against us, and he has a pretty dangerous sucking action, and, well... No, it looks like there is a light just out of the corner of our eye. Well, it looks like it looks like we're doomed. So you've come all this way. My soul has been uneasy ever since I sent, I sent you a letter. I'm no longer the same person I was when I first met that girl. The Red Stone. William, what have I come this far for? And out of all the things that I expected to save us, I did not expect it to be our father. And what makes that even more distressing is the fact that it almost seemed like he really didn't want to save us in the first place. Is he here to save all the people aboard the Orpheus, or indeed is he just trying to get the red stone for himself for some nefarious purpose? Well. I guess that's just something we're going to have to figure out. Because we have just a little bit further to go as we head down through the lower areas. And hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to survive the dangers that await. See you next time.